Hello guys, this video is about controlling new pixel LEDs using STM32 microcontrollers. Also, I'd like to thank people who donated me by just joining my community by enrolling my courses. These people are helping me to move forward. Also, the PDF document and the source code that I use on this uh, tutorial can be found on the community page. So, let's get started. Before coding, I would like to introduce how these LEDs operate. The new pixel LEDs have data in and data out pins, and they have to be connected on the chain mode when the data out pin is connected to the data in pin of the next LED. And it's the same for other neighboring LEDs. And what we need to do is to provide data to the data in pin of the first LED. And due to these connections, the data will flow to all other LEDs. So using just a single line, we can control all these LEDs. I think it's pretty cool. And next, let's talk about the data format. Every new pixel LED requires 24 bits of data, 8 bits for each red, green and blue colors. So if we send this uh, sequence of 1s and zeros, first 8 bits is to adjust the intensity of the green color. Then we have re red and in the end blue. And the LED will emit this color which is the sum of these three colors. Finally, let's talk about the data waveform. The new pixel LEDs require a PWM signal with 1.25 microseconds period. And when the duration of the high state is 0.8 microseconds, we have a logical one. When the duration of the high state is 0.4 microseconds, we have, we have a logical zero. For example, if we want to send 1001, we will end up with this PWM signal. So we have 0.8 microseconds high state and 0.4, 0.4 and in the end 0.8 microseconds. So by just varying the duty cycle of the PWM signal, by varying I mean we have only two options, either 0.8 microseconds or 0.4 microseconds. We can send um, a sequence of ones and zeros to the new pixel LEDs. Also, it's worth mentioning that after sending all the data, we need to keep data line low for 15 microseconds just to reset, just to notify the LEDs that this is the end of the data transaction. Next, let me show how to configure the PWM signal using the Cubimix software. So I personally use Timer 3 channel 1 of this timer to generate a PWM signal. And if we open the clock configuration, uh, we can see that the frequency of the clock is 80 MHz. And I set the prescaler uh, to 3, so the frequency of the timer will be 20 MHz. Then I set the counter period to 24, uh, so the frequency of the PWM signal will be 800 kHz. And you may ask why this value, because we need 1.25 microseconds period and if we flip this value we get exactly 800,000. That's why we need 800 kilohertz frequency. And the rest of the parameters we keep by default, but we also need to enable DMA. Uh, DMA is necessary to, up to update the duty cycle on time without having any delays. So we stream to this um, channel channel 1, uh, for memory to peripheral of course, we increment memory, the data width is half word, or in other words 2 bytes. Also we enable interrupts, and finally, uh, don't forget to connect this um, pin that generates PWM signal to the data in pin of the first LED, so in my situation it is PC6. Then you save the file and the necessary code will be generated. Finally, let's talk about the actual code itself. So I created separate header and source files to work with the new pixel LEDs. And within the header file, I have these two markers. And when we set 15 to the register that controls the duty cycle of the PWM signal, we get around 0.8 microseconds duration high state. So this is for logical one. 
and and when we set seven we get around 0.4 microseconds uh, duration uh, high state so this is to represent logical zero and uh, that's why i have these two markers uh, for logical one and for logical zero so in the end we will have an array whose elements are either equal to 15 or 7 to represent logical 1 and 0 correspondingly. Then we will stream this array through the DMA um, that allow us to generate a PWM, a proper PWM signal that uh, new pixel LEDs can understand. And then to encapsulate data, I defined this um, track. Uh, for new pixel LED, so it has three uh, members uh, to represent three colors green, red, and blue. And every member has eight elements because we have eight bits for each color. So every um, element uh, is either equal to 15 or 7 to represent logical 1 and 0. And we have another track to define RGB color. So our task is to define functions that takes this RGB color and converts, converts this data uh, to the new pixel LED um, data type. So we can stream this data through DMA to generate a proper PWM signal. So finally, let me show these functions. Uh, so the first function is to reset all bits of uh, all LEDs. So the first, uh, argument is is the way of um, new pixel LEDs and the second argument is to define the number of LEDs and using these uh, four nested loops I just assign logical zero to all uh, bits of all colors and then I have another function which is quite similar to this but instead of uh, assigning logical zero I assign logical one so in the end we get a white color uh, in all LEDs and using these two functions, I wrote um, this piece of code uh, within the while loop. Uh, but first, let me show this uh, macro. So I have 12 um, uh, LEDs on my board. That's why I defined this macro. And we have another um, uh, variable, which is, um, which is an array of new pixel LEDs. And I have plus one because as, as I uh, mentioned, uh, after sending data, we just need to keep data line low just to reset, just to define the end of the data transaction. That's why, that's why I added plus one. So what I do within the while loop, I reset all LEDs. Then using this uh, function, uh, I stream this um, data uh, through DME. So it allows us to get a PWM signal with varying duty cycle. And I delay, then I set all LEDs again, then I, I send the data uh, through the May again. And finally, I have another delay. So using this uh, piece of code, we, we, we get um, LEDs that blink every 300 milliseconds. Uh, also, it's worth mentioning that um, here's the a callback function which is invoked when um, um, DMA uh, finishes uh, sending um, the data. So what I do, I just stop DMA and I set the duty cycle uh, to zero. This is uh, really, really important. I also have another piece of code uh, to circulate a, a red uh, color uh, as shown in the video and for that purpose I have this function that allows setting specific RGB color to the particular LED so the, the, the second argument is to define the position of that LED so using this if else statements I just check every bit of the RGB color and I assign logical one uh, or logical zero correspondingly and I have this uh, 7 minus J because I need to reverse the order of the bits when sending data and that's how it works um, so what I do is um, I have first uh, these two uh, colors 
red and black colors. So what I do is I assign black color um, to the LED on this position. Then I increment it and I, and I assign red color. So then I have, uh, then I send data and then I increment the counter again. So using this uh, algorithm, let's say I just circulate red color. And finally, I have this piece of code to circulate um, some kind of pattern. So instead of just uh, controlling one LED, I can, we control all LEDs. And for that purpose, I have this function. So uh, using this uh, function that I showed you before, uh, and using uh, using the for loop, I assign RGB uh, specific RGB colors to all LEDs. So using um, just double um, uh, double array, um, I just circulate this pattern. 